Hi, today we'd like to talk and start talking about different kind of emotions. Now, the first one that I wish to share with you, it's about hate. Now, hate uh, as a mode of guilt or of pride generates destructive thoughts, but maybe in a lesser intensity than a paranoia. Now, they are like antithetical thoughts when they are directed to other people and they represent pride. And when directed to yourself, they represent guilt. At a much lesser intensity of denigration, criticisms of other people represent jealousy, whilst criticisms of yourself arise from a sense of idealism. Hate by itself is the emotional dynamic of the ability to sustain long periods of concentration and meditation. It does not require an object to focus on. It mirrors pure love in this respect. It is a general proposed tool for cutting positive attachments especially in relationships, for example, pride in hate mode, rejects another person, whereas hate by itself rejects any pleasant attachment to the other person. Hate produces clear thinking and strengthens a person's willpower. It supports the desire for solitude. It cools the mind and may easily be mistaken for a mild sense of peace. It is likely to be the prevailing mood when a meditator claims that they are no longer acting from a sense of ego. The skillful way of using hate is to clear the mind of redundant attachments and desires. Today I'm going to talk about self-pity. Self-pity itself generates the inability to achieve anything. It differs from the other two modes in that you do not blame yourself, as in guilt, nor are you particularly socially orientated, as in jealousy. Also, it differs from guilt in self-pity mode in that it enables you to identify with people who have made heroic efforts in life and yet have failed. For guilt, heroism is meaningless. Self-pity makes you sentimental. When self-pity is dominant, you deny responsibility. One way of achieving this is the desire for endless travel. So long as you travel, you have no responsibilities. In general, endless activity is usually a hallmark of the flight from self-pity. Despite the activity, the person is never satisfied. For example, self-pity leads to trouble as the expression of endless activity or self-pity as a mode of guilt leads to housework or business as the expression of endless activity, like the workaholic person. Self-pity as a mode of jealousy leads to duty as the expression of of endless moral activity. This endless activity is the attempt to overcome the sense of failure. That is, self-pity implies the sense of social failure. And self-pity as a mode of guilt implies the sense of spiritual failure 
or the failure of idealism. Self-pity as a mode of jealousy implies the sense of personal failure, that is, the failure to be an individual.